you have to take negative 3, subtract 1. Just raise your hand and tell me, what is negative 3, subtract 1? Negative 4. Negative 4. Two tickets. Common error is to write negative 2. Like, look at what I have. You see why people would write negative 2? Yeah. Just to watch out for that mistake. So, and then this becomes dx dx. Mighty x equals this is the power rule now. Oh, real fast. Oh please check. On the one third, the one third <coughs> above that, that's the power rule that you just did. Yes, from here to here, this to this was power rule for sure. Question? Anybody else? Make sure I marked out two tickets and you really had that call on you for any reason. So these two now can multiply. Becomes negative one. Questions there? How did you get that? Just re-explain that last step. Then. Uh, from here to here. Yeah. So <laughs> there's no distribution way then because I simply have one, two, three things being multiplied. There's no addition. So you just multiply what's easily multiplied. Oh. Okay. Uh, one third times negative three easily becomes negative okay. one. I can't combine the rest. Right. Good question. I saw you in an interview on TV last week. So really? really excited. Yeah. Well, okay, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, it's he's on TV. I don't remember that. <laughs> the whole name thing, I think, has finally been fixed. Like, I don't think I'll ever call you by the wrong name again. Yeah. The Benedict Cumberbatch helped, yeah, actually. It, 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 it made it stick, so. <laughs> yeah, I like I'm watching it. All right. Are we good? Okay. Sweet. Um, Ellie, I don't know if I've answered your question. Yeah, okay. You want me to keep going on this one? Um, well, before you did like that last <coughs> time, I did the power rule because I didn't do like the negative four. I mean, like I didn't do the constant, but like I still got the negative four x to the third. Oh, that's okay. And then, um. So you got to your okay, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, so I have that. And then, um, like I had the same, like one third over the Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'm done. This is my fault. 
double kids right hold on. Like I was taking the factors and then I'm one. catching up to you now. Tell me the whole thing that you wrote. So um uh, like my work? Just, like, okay. Do you have this written on your paper? Right? You're good. Do you have this line written? <laughs> yes. Good. What's the very next line you wrote? Um negative four x. <laughs> Just read your line. Just read what you wrote. But really, hey, everyone, everyone look up. Hey, shh. Five tickets for Hannah for being very patient with me. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Shh. The reason I keep I, eyes over here, I want you to look at me. Uh, no, five tickets. Will you be very patient with me? Thank you. Listen. The reason I want her to read what she's written is because I, I keep telling you over and over again, I'm going to check today. You have to have very good notation, otherwise you get mixed up. It's not just about conveying to the grader that you know what you're doing. So that's why I need you to read what you've written so I can see if your notation is correct. So um, I wrote one third open parenthesis. You said it's a negative four x thing first, you said. Oh, yeah, like the, the whole thing, okay. the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so negative four open parenthesis x, close parenthesis, break to the third. what you write. 
Like if you write it correctly, you read it correctly, you'll, you'll avoid mistakes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. What, the problem is this, Tara. You still have the habit, and we're just slowly but surely breaking the habit of doing problems based on just visual manipulation. Not, hey, I get from this line to this line by this rule. Yeah, you're just remembering, oh, in previous class I just kind of memorized steps and moved things around, and yeah, you always have to have a rule. So, right. oh, please. Um, so to be able to actually add them for the eggs, the This one here? Yeah. Thank you. This were negative 4x to the third, and this were negative 1x to the third. third. We would now have negative 5x to the third. Okay. Perfect. Well, that was great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, uh, are we ready to go into next problem? I think so. Is that good here? Three? Oh, it, it's an entire Oh, no. We'll go here first, then back to three. Did you want 24 too? Uh, no, I wanted it. Well, mine's more of a step. Then. Okay, go ahead. Please, please. So, <laughs> say you have. Uh, D, like the example I have. Yeah, let me just write down exactly what you're saying. So it's D, 3XY squared, or Y cubed, over DX. Would you have, like, how would you break that up? Because I Perfect. thought, it, could it be like the product rule? So would you do 3X and then Y cubed? Or would it be 3X, 3X or Y cubed? Like, how would you split that up? Uh, superb question. Three tickets. Superb question. Three uh, tickets. Superb question. There are multiple ways you can approach the problem. I'll just show you what I think is the easiest, and if you want additional ways, just ask. Okay. But I think the easiest is just to simply think of it as 3x multiplied by y cubed. Okay. So then using the product rule, you take the second of those two functions, multiply by the derivative of the first, plus the first of those two functions, multiply by the derivative of the second. Okay. Does that answer your question? No, yeah, that answers it. I'll just write the next line in case someone needs it. This becomes just 3. Power rule, bring down the 3, change the exponent. Don't forget to multiply by dy dx. That was a common mistake. One second. These two 3's can multiply to give me this. That's where I'm going to go. And what one is that from? That's from 30. Let me make a note of that. Any 
question right here. The question has been very good. Just keep speaking up again. Make sure you know how I get from every step to every step. Don't just memorize that I did it. The worst reason you can have in your head is, I don't know why, but Mr. Smith did this, so I guess I can too. You need to know what rule is being used. Are we good? Cool. So this becomes three. Uh, now it's the power rules. This is 15 y squared. Don't forget that it becomes dy dx. <coughs> Product rule. Uh, I would make a flashcard can't remember that every time you have one thing that becomes two things, smart put parentheses. So this one is going to become two, so I throw down a set of parentheses there. <coughs> Pause for notes and questions. So when it comes to those two things, you just put the x. So for example, you just put you put y in front of one, and then it's x keeps in front of the other. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure why there's a y in a y in front of the dx. Oh, it's the product rule. The product rule requires that we identify we are taking d over dx of two multiplying functions. The rule says you take the second function, not put it in front, multiplied by the d over dx of the second, plus the first function multiplied by d over dx of the second. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Don't. is an abbreviation for dy dx. Okay, I got every eyes on the board now. Look at me. Okay, look here at this. Okay, please note, there's no number here. There's no number here. There's no exponent other than one, which you don't write. Therefore, nothing is operating on the parentheses. Positive one doesn't cause anything, so I can drop the parentheses now.
pull out the y prime by factoring. I gotta tell you a quick funny story. I gotta tell the crowd grandfather stories. Uh, so I have two little granddaughters. They're like three and a half and two and a half. So really close in age. Um, we go out to, I had to go help my daughter. Her window would blow up on her van. And I kind of like to fix cars on my own, so I looked on YouTube and saw what I needed to do to make the window go up. <laughs> so I go there to fix her window, right? And we're out there, and her, her little grand, her little daughter, Talia, she comes out and she's like, Grandma, why are you following us? Because <laughs> like she had been at our house earlier that day. She's like, why are you following us? Why are you bothering me? <laughs> we kind of like you, Talia. It's like, why, Grandma, why are you bothering me? Um, anyway, it was funny at the time. Okay, I don't know quite as funny in the retelling, but you know. Chad. So just a quick question with the factoring or whatever. So even though the two terms are being added in the first part, you can factor out the y prime. Uh, yes. In fact, hey, listen. No, you said the key word. Uh, one of the most, the place where we actually use factoring the most is the situation we see here where I have three things being multiplied, three factors, and then two other things being multiplied, and the two sets are being added, yeah. that's when we use factor. Okay. So we pull out the common factor. It's perfect. You know? so keep going. Last step is to simply divide. Not sure if this was what Paris was referring to, but hey, is this the answer in the back? Or is the answer in the back? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Very good. Okay, let's have one. Go ahead, man. Twelve. Read twelve, man. squared or sine to the fourth is write it differently. This will save mistakes. <coughs> write it like that. That's really step one. Just don't make the error of thinking that sine to the negative one means the same thing. Sine to the negative one is arc sine or inverse sine. It's a totally different rule. There. Please. So then you bring the three in front. Yeah, so what rule are we using first? Don't we? Power rule. Yeah. Down the three, multiply by, uh, by the base, uh, create a new exponent, and then multiply by d over dx of that same base. Three minus, it would be three minus one. Oh, thank you, buddy. Right there in my table that asked me. Or you can come up here and sit by Drayden and Girl. Okay. 
polynomial so we can do that derivative quickly 12x squared of cube sorry
Can we got this so I can change the channel? Mm -hmm. Ray. Ray, read 29, please. Um, 2xy squared equals uh, 2x cubed plus 5y squared. Uh, here we're going to use the product rule. styles. She'd done one with like pure butter which came out kind of white and another honey butter which was made with margarine that came out kind of yellow. She's kind of like two different flavors a little bit. So Jamie, my daughter, she walks up to <coughs> grandma she's like, Grandma, can I have some bread and honey butter? And and my mom goes, sure, Jamie, would you like white or yellow? She like shows her right. Jamie looks up and she's like, well. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom my mom, like all adults, right? She's like, no, Jamie, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow. And so Jamie's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lello. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So my mom's like, okay, one more time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow. Jamie's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lello. <laughs> <laughs> so then my mom just won't give up. She's like, no, Jamie. Jamie looks up and she goes, I'll have white. All right, I remember these things. <laughs> Any questions to hear? Oops, that was a good middle break. What? <laughs> okay, cool. Keep going. We <laughs> so good. We never. We never. I love it. Why are you guys so Remember. Remember. <laughs> hey, one second only. Uh, please, please don't step in this trap. Look right here. It's very common to say that this derivative becomes just 2y. 2y dy dx. Don't miss that. Please don't. So you just like did the constant rule in the first part, and then it just did the equation to the same part of one. Yes. And you would bring that to the front of the two y squared. Right, because the two and the y squared are being multiplied. It's really y squared multiplied by two. Okay. And the order of multiplication doesn't matter. Gotcha. So we just move it to the other side, just out of tradition. There you go. Cool. Wait, I have a quick oh, please, please. So um, in the parentheses, it's two y and then dy over dx. How'd you get the two y from that? Okay, so the <laughs> steps I did in my head would look like this. Great question. Let's go over here. So I still have the two x. I bring down the two, change the exponent, multiply by d over dx of the exponent. So you just bring down the y with it? Is no. So this is d over dx yeah. of something being squared. Yeah. The power rule says you bring down the 2, you multiply by the something. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I see, yeah. You're good. Uh, there we go. Shh, 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 shh. 
So now this becomes 6x squared. Question? Watch out for the trap again. Every time dy dx is required, it is very common to forget that. So just gotta keep reminding yourself. That's why I had you write dx over dx for a while to get used to that. So. <coughs> Okay, look here. It's back to Hannah's comment. It's a really good question for gave her five. Plus, she was really patient with me. Um, notice here, Tara, nothing is being added, just multiplication. Therefore, like Sarah said a minute ago, these twos can easily multiply together. Which way do you go? Do you move the y prime terms to the left, or do you move the y prime terms to the right? Um, I don't know. I'm going to go left because it's a little more traditional. So I'm going to move this one this way. So I'm going to end up with this. That's what you're asking about, Paris. Is that correct? Yeah. simply compare and I note that I almost have exactly the same thing just the constants or the coefficients are different so factoring is all I need to do so from the numerator and denominator I can factor a 2 yes good question and part of that is to get you used to that section And tonight, um, Deborah did help, and also on Thursday night, and also on next Monday night, I'm going to give you a practice test, a different one each day, that is a multiple choice practice test. So you can get used to the fact that you've got a lot of it. So that's how I get my answer. <coughs> explain the practice test for tonight and then if I have time I'm going to come check your notation and give you some extra credit that your notation is looking good. So, yeah, no new concepts in it. 
combined terms that can be combined. So we have, this is all the cosine of all of that, two, we don't want to unfactor, so we'll combine the two and the 15. Something that often 
will transform your answer into their answer very quickly is to simply multiply the numerator and denominator of your answer by negative one. Is somebody, I need to explain why that's legal. Why is going from here to here legal? Please. Good. Negative one over negative one is simply one. Uh, Sarah, if I take one times anything, have I changed what I multiply? No, it's gonna look different, but it's the same thing. Perfect. So now we have this. The why is the most important part about this class. If you know why something works, you'll be able to use it in the future. If you're just memorizing steps, you're gonna have trouble. So this one has to distribute. So I can do that. Ah, great question. So it's different. It's different. Like, <laughs> hey. Now Sarah's question is perfect. It's different than performing an operation to both sides. We're only performing the operation to one side, but the reason it's legal is Sarah, what's this the same as? One. One times anything is just whatever we started with. So we don't have to do that to both sides. Because we're not changing. The whole idea is to maintain equality. One way you maintain equality is by performing an operation to both sides of the equation. Oh, only to make sure we can match up with the answer. Like this is what we wrote down. The back of the sheet looks like this. I'm just showing you the same thing. Yeah, but I was answer. Oh, there's no point. It's just that's what they wrote, this is what you wrote. So it's really, Sarah, it's simply this. If you're working a multiple choice task and you come up with this, are you going to be successfully able to recognize that this is what the multiple choice task is? Essentially. And they're not even necessarily trying to test that, but you have to be prepared to do that. On that same question, I'm just confused on how negative sign. They show up to work in like black limousines and they 
they go into some underground parking garage. You never see them. And they, they emerge in darkness now wearing black cloaks. But it's <laughs> they, they, they go to some elevator that goes down like 55 stories into the earth. And they, some dark room with candles. And they sit down there and just craft problems. No comment. <laughs> All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. So how come the anti like the like the why? Why this? Yeah, like that's not why 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 here exactly exactly that. Um a couple things. First of all, the word simplified is really misused. Um uh, <coughs> I really think we should change how math is taught. Because once you get to higher level math, simplified doesn't mean what it means in junior high. In junior high, teachers will just give you certain rules and say, oh, always do this, always do that. Those are just traditions. They're not rules. Um, in reality, we don't really care what an answer looks like until we want to do something with the answer. So the word simplified is, is misused completely. Now, here's what I really think happened on this worksheet, Sarah. Um, this seems to make sense, okay? But somebody used some software to create these answers. I don't think a person worked them out by hand. Like they literally used some software to create them. So they come up with kind of a weird looking answer where this really doesn't look simpler. That's all. But it is crucial that you know that they're the same. Like if you don't understand why this is the same as this, you're gonna miss problems. Please. <clears throat> Sorry, my question was just earlier. We're getting there. I just keep getting no, other questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, How is it? You're fine. No problem. So let's fix this so I can get to your question. I needed to make a room right before I didn't lose all this. That's why I just did it. <laughs> Add rule in my head, is that okay? Mm -hmm. yep. So this becomes y minus y prime. Yep. This becomes six y y prime. And yep. wow. bring the y prime over here. Oh, here we go. Sarah, louder. What they did is they brought this to this side. This is where all the negatives came from. Like that. That's how it turned out. Factor out the y prime. Look at me, please. Look at me. So 
so here's the practice test. We've got to yeah, I'll pay people. Um, and here's how strongly I feel about the practice test. Listen, if you don't use the practice test correctly, uh, some of you have heard this speech before, you're really just wasting your time. If you use it correctly, it will make a huge difference in your actual test score. So someone raise your hand, I'll pay you five tickets to tell the class some way you should properly treat the practice test. Um, probably not as like, not as like, assignment act got treated like a test so go through all the problems and then go back. Nice. The closer you treat this like it's just we talked about this before like practice games and football. The closer you treat this like a real test, the more value it will have. So one thing Jeff said was do it all at once. That is good advice. Other good advice in treating this like a test. No perfect head. You don't get any sheet on the test. There are no notes allowed. Everything has to come from memory. Um, one hint, though, listen. I have had students who found it useful to do this. Uh, once you're seated for the test and everything's off your desk, um, it is legal to, um, I can't ask for scratch paper on the AP test, but for my test, you can. It's legal to ask for a piece of scratch paper, and then you simply write down the formulas from memory. So that as you're actually working the test, you don't have to remember them. Some people find that useful. You're welcome to do that. But you can't use it during the test. So don't use the formula sheet while you are taking the practice test. Questions? Uh, I want you to use something else, though. Here's the Scantron I'm going to give you. Are there answers on the back of that? This one we're going to do much closer to a real test. There's no answers. No. So what you're going to do <laughs> is you're going to treat it like a real test. Okay, so you're going to come back to class on <laughs> Thursday and we'll find out how you did. Okay. Understand? The idea is to simulate the test as close as possible. Look at me. I lost Soren and landed on their own problems. Yeah, I, I really am very patient on the phone. When I start talking, you got to put it away. Otherwise, we have to go to the old grade school thing. I have to walk down to the office and blah, 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 blah. That's really my way of Okay. Um, listen. Uh, what I should do is just, it's not legal, but I should just design a scramble and turn it on in my room. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> Would you really? You <laughs> cell phone interference. All right. Um, I thought of once getting some, they have paint that you can buy that has copper flakes in the paint, and they blend it with the kids. No, we built like this instrument over here. You coat it with that kind of a paint. If I turn it over, you can see it. So that um, it becomes an electromagnetic shield because you don't want cell phone signals interfering with your $4,000 measuring device because it makes the readings go bad. So you actually put it inside a shielded enclosure. Most devices are built that way nowadays. Cell phones are all shielded inside the key components. So I was just going to make my room a shielded device. People come like, Mr. Smith, my phone never works in your life. Um, <laughs> bad luck, you know. Check with your service provider. Okay. Um, listen. Hey, quiet. On the schedule, look at me. Look at me. I gotta see your eyes. Okay, as you're working the practice test, if you get to a problem where you just have to look at the formula sheet, or you end up working it with someone else, please, please, please. Circle that problem's number on the Scantron. So when I give you the results back on Thursday, you can say to yourself, okay, I did okay, I got them all right, but half of them I got help. And that's not really that great yet then. Because on the day of the test, you're not going to get any help. So do we understand? Yes, Okay. Um, other ways you can treat the practice test like a real test. Any comments? Five tickets still good. I can think of any other. Okay, cool. I'm going to pass it out. I can think it come to your room. <laughs> you could, you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Brady, this question, will all the rules be used on the test? Great question, Brady. Um, the rules I've given you, I did something that textbooks don't do. I combined the textbook version of the power rule with the chain rule and created like my super power rule. Okay. It, I promise, it's, they're combined. It makes it easier for you, it's easier. So I don't have a specific question on the test, 
that tests the chain rule all by itself. You're using the chain rule on almost every single problem, just not that specific version of the chain rule. Okay. Um, the other one I don't think I have is the inverse cosine. I can't say for sure, but I didn't think I tested you on that. Okay. But the inverse cosine and the inverse sine are the same rule, other than the cosine one's negative. So it's pretty easy to memorize. Yeah. Absolutely. But all the rest of the rules, I'm 99% sure Brady are tested on the test. Okay. Um, okay, listen, I'm going to pass this out. Even though it is best to get started, you know, do it on your own, you're welcome to get started if you'd like in the last 10 minutes, you can take a break. I'm going to walk around. I want to see your pink homework assignment. So I want to see your pink homework assignment. Um, if you've done well, I'll pay you significant extra credit. If I see lots of applause, not so significant extra credit. Wait, what is it? Checking our notation. Make sure the other 